Picture this, it's a crisp evening, the kind that wraps you in a cozy embrace as you settle down in front of your vintage television set. The year is 1964, and a wave of excitement washes over you as the screen flickers to life. The opening credits of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea roll in, accompanied by a timeless melody that still echoes in your mind to this day. That iconic submarine, the Sea View, majestically glides through the depths of the ocean, carrying you on a journey to the unknown. As you immerse yourself in the captivating adventures of Captain Lee Crane, Admiral Nelson, and their fearless crew, you can't help but recall those memorable moments that etched themselves into your heart. The suspenseful encounters with sea monsters, the tense race against time to avert disaster, and the camaraderie among the crew members, it all feels like a cherished memory from a bygone era. But did you know that behind the scenes, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea held its own set of intriguing facts and tidbits? From the groundbreaking special effects of the time to the enduring legacy it left in the world of science fiction, there's more to this classic series than meets the eye. So, let's dive deeper into the depths of this iconic show, exploring the fascinating random facts that make Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea a timeless gem in television history. Get ready to journey back in time and rediscover the wonders of this beloved series. Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, the 1964 TV series, emerged as a pioneering undersea adventure that captured the imagination of viewers. Created by Irwin Allen, the show was a thrilling amalgamation of science fiction and maritime exploration. Set aboard the futuristic submarine Seaview, the series followed the adventures of Admiral Nelson and Captain Crane as they navigated the deep sea, encountering a gamut of perilous situations from sea monsters to espionage. The show's unique style was marked by its cutting-edge special effects for the time, which brought the oceanic mysteries to life. Iconic characters like the stoic Admiral Nelson and the resourceful Captain Crane became beloved figures, while the advanced technology and futuristic setting added a distinct flavor to the series. Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea also tackled contemporary issues, making it not just an escapist adventure but a reflection of the era's concerns, including Cold War tensions and environmental awareness. In terms of impact, the series left an indelible mark on popular culture, inspiring a feature film, spin-off novels, and even a theme park attraction. It was a pioneer in the realm of underwater exploration-themed television, paving the way for subsequent series and films in the genre. Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea stands as a timeless classic, a testament to the enduring appeal of exploration and adventure on the high seas, and remains a cherished part of television history. History In the 1964 TV series Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, a notable fact stands out. Not a single actress appeared in any episode during the entire fourth season, not even in a voice or non-speaking role. This was a unique aspect of the show, as it primarily featured male characters in its cast. The absence of female actors throughout the fourth season was a distinctive choice, reflecting the time and the show's focus on underwater adventures and military missions. It set Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea apart from many other television series of its era, which often included female characters in various roles. The decision to maintain an all-male cast for an entire season remains a noteworthy aspect of the show's history. The series also had an interesting subplot involving the Seaview, the show's main submarine. In the second episode, it was revealed that the Seaview had a sister sub called the Polydor. However, this sister sub met a tragic fate as it was destroyed in that same episode. This subplot added depth to the Seaview's history and showcased the dangers of underwater exploration that the crew faced on a regular basis. During the 1965 season of the series, there were plans to introduce a recurring character named Susan Flannery, who would have played the role of Admiral Nelson's secretary. Her character would have served as both an onshore ally to the adventures and an occasional romantic interest for Captain Crane. However, these plans were ultimately dropped. The decision came after demographics showed that the series was more popular with children than adults, suggesting that a romantic subplot might not have resonated well with the show's primary audience. In conclusion, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea had its share of unique aspects and interesting subplots during its run. The absence of actresses in the fourth season, the brief appearance of the sister sub Polydor, and the abandoned plans for Susan Flannery's character all added layers to the show's history and development. 
Department. In 1964, a 66-card set of black and white trading cards was released by Donruss, selling for five cents a pack. The set consisted of stills from the first season of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. Today, a set in mint condition can sell for several hundred dollars. These collectible cards offered fans a tangible connection to the popular TV series. Each card featured scenes and characters from the show, providing a visual journey into the depths of the submarine sea view and its adventures. For just a nickel, fans could bring home a piece of the action. The value of these trading cards has since soared in the collector's market. Mint condition sets have become sought-after items, with prices reflecting their rarity and nostalgic appeal. It's a testament to the enduring popularity of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea that these cards continue to command such high prices among collectors and enthusiasts. In the 1964 TV series Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, there's an interesting connection to another iconic show. James Doohan, known for his role as Chief Engineer Montgomery Scott in Star Trek, was originally offered the part of Chief Sharky in Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. However, he turned it down because he accepted the role of Scotty on the Starship Enterprise that same week. This decision led to his definitive role in Star Trek. Terry Becker eventually took on the role of Sharky in the series. This behind-the-scenes tidbit sheds light on how casting decisions can shape the course of an actor's career. Doohan's choice not only impacted Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea but also contributed significantly to the success of Star Trek. It's a reminder of the pivotal moments that can define an actor's legacy. It's fascinating how one decision can lead to an entirely different path in the world of entertainment. In this case, James Doohan's choice altered the landscape of two beloved television series. That's the intriguing story behind the scenes of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. And that's your Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea trivia for today. For today. For today. In its second season, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea underwent some changes. ABC wanted a lighter tone, leading to more Monster of the Week plots. However, the series didn't completely abandon its initial themes. It still featured episodes about Cold War issues and near-future speculative fiction. This mix kept the show's essence intact while accommodating network demands. One significant change was the season two opener, Jonah and the Whale, which became the first color episode. The Seaview submarine got a makeover with a single set of observation windows and a hatch for the flying sub. Though stock footage sometimes showed more windows, the redesign was a notable shift. New uniforms and the introduction of the flying sub added to the season's alterations. Across seasons two to four, six different flying sub models were used for filming. Henry Kulke joined the show as Chief Curly Jones but tragically suffered a fatal heart attack in February 1965. This unfortunate event cut short his time on the series and his career, which included over 100 features in television episodes. His presence in Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea left a lasting impact, and his sudden departure was a significant loss. These changes and developments in the series' second season showcased its adaptability while also honoring its initial tone and cast members. Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea continued to evolve while remaining true to its core themes. The final two seasons of the 1964 TV series Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea took a peculiar turn by embracing paranormal storylines. This shift towards the supernatural was in line with the trends of the late 1960s. Viewers witnessed the Seaview submarine's crew encountering mummies, werewolves, talking puppets, and even an evil leprechaun within the confines of their undersea vessel. The show also featured peculiar creatures like fossil men, flame men, frost men, lobster men, and shadow men. What tied these bizarre encounters together was the notably low-budget makeup effects and costume designs, consistent with Irwin Allen's other TV productions of the time. These unique storylines added an unusual twist to the show's original premise of underwater adventures, marking a distinctive phase in its evolution. In the 1964 TV series Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, there's an interesting detail about the circuitry room. Whenever it's shown after an explosion or fire, the door is always unlocked. This might seem like a small inconsistency, but it's a recurring quirk in the series that fans have noticed over the years. Additionally, during the second season of the show, a significant development occurred. Richard Basehart, who played Admiral Nelson, fell ill during the filming of the episode The Monster's Web and couldn't complete that episode or the next two. 
To work around this, the monster's web was rewritten to reduce Admiral Nelson's role. A stand-in was used for many shots with his face hidden, and his lines were dubbed. In the following episodes, The Menfish and The Mechanical Man, Admiral Nelson was absent, and his lines were reassigned to other characters. Baseheart eventually returned in time for the season finale, The Return of the Phantom. Moreover, a notable change happened at the start of the second season. The episode Jonah and the Whale became the first to be broadcast in color. Seaview, the submarine featured in the series, underwent a redesign, with only one set of observation windows and a hatch for the flying sub. However, stock footage continued to show the sub with three or six windows throughout seasons two through four. New uniforms and the introduction of the flying sub were also notable changes. Interestingly, over the course of these seasons, six different flying sub models were used for filming. These intriguing details provide a glimpse into the behind-the-scenes happenings and quirks of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, a classic TV series from 1964 that continues to hold a special place in the hearts of its fans. As we navigate the depths of nostalgia and explore the timeless waters of classic television, one cannot help but be captivated by the enigmatic allure of the 1964 TV series, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. A journey through the depths of both the ocean and the human spirit, this series has left an indelible mark on the hearts of its viewers, transcending the boundaries of time. As we bid adieu to this captivating underwater world, I invite you to take a moment to reflect on your personal connection with Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. Perhaps you were drawn to the daring adventures of the Seaview crew, or maybe you marveled at the futuristic technology portrayed on screen. Did the show spark your imagination or ignite a lifelong fascination with the mysteries of the deep sea? Share your cherished memories and thoughts, for they are the treasures that keep this series alive. In the vast sea of television history, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea remains a shining beacon, reminding us of the boundless potential of human exploration and the enduring power of storytelling. So, let your thoughts flow like the currents of the ocean and let us celebrate the legacy of this remarkable series together. Thank you for sharing in this voyage down memory lane and for your time and interest in the world of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. Until we embark on our next adventure together, keep those memories afloat. Warmly, warmly, warmly.